So I think there is a need for these other technologies because I feel that Bitcoin maybe they lack it lacks in that in that respect to be a efficient transaction um, coin. I mean, correct me if, my, if I'm if I'm wrong. Uh, but do do you feel Bitcoin will always be number one cryptocurrency out there? Um, Have you heard of the Lightning Network? No, I haven't. So please, please enlighten me. <laughs> I know absolutely. So so Jack Mahler um, integrated his application called uh, I believe it's called Strike or Stripe. Um, Stripe, yeah. Yeah, Stripe, and and that's how El Salvador is going to be doing transactions through the Lightning Network using Bitcoin. And um, the amount of developers that have been pulled in all the directions within the crypto space, I mean, we have 10,000 cryptos, right? Um, yeah. At this point and counting um, and, and more, but Bitcoin is capable. And I don't want to say like, oh, I like being the underdog. <laughs> you know, actually, I really do. Um, and and the Lightning Network and and how can I say DAG technology, nano contracts, it's all capable with on the with on the Bitcoin network. And and that's the lack of research and and due diligence and knowledge within the market because people are being pulled in different directions. I mean, there's a very powerful person that doesn't like something that's decentralized and wants to take it as his own. And whether it you know, has no market cap, has no applicability, no usability, and he's pushing it. Why? Nobody knows. Will we ever know? Probably not. You know, but Bitcoin is capable to do that. To the growth of it, absolutely. But it's starting to become not that, you know, that problem. So again, the maturity is coming and it's happening. Actually, it's not coming. It's happening. I mean, the, the fact that El Salvador brought on Bitcoin as a legal tender and you have a little uh, boutique store, Tiki Hut, selling pina coladas on El Salvador Beach uh, with Bitcoin should say that, sure. you know, um, and it hasn't resonated yet with the market. And for whatever reason, you know, it's, it's a big world, right? And there's a lot of different feelings. However, Bitcoin is capable to do that. Um, was there a point in time where fees and and timing was a restraint to consider? As someone who, who needs to do research on on the Bitcoin network, you'd say it's just to look at nano contracts and the Lightning network um, to see the future of of Bitcoin. Correct. There's this token that's. Um, recently, not recently, in 2019, it was created in the main net or released on the main net called Hather. Yes. And Hather is instantaneous, zero fees on the SHA-256 algo. So it uses DAG to on the blockchain, which is imagine a bunch of side chains within the main blockchain of Bitcoin. And there's zero fees, instantaneous transaction. So this is just the beginning for what can be um, because you know, proof of stake is proof of stake. And any token that's built off of proof of stake is obviously owned by somebody. And that takes away from the ethos of what crypto is. Talking about the, the current environment right now with a lot of government bodies and it's coming out, criticizing cryptocurrencies, warning investors that it's, it's way too speculative and people stories of people losing their, their house over uh, invested in Bitcoin. What would you suggest? Do you feel that's a, a fair, oh, of course, the, the market's volatile, but uh, as with any investment, uh, you have to be sensible. Do you feel cryptocurrency has to be regulated or there should be an element of regulation or do you feel, well, you, you know, this you know, is... should be allowed less, less a fair kind of a system? You kind of toss this one to me because we're sitting next to each other right now. <laughs> but the reality is, is alternative investments, even though some of these investments that they term as being alternative have existed far longer than the stock market has, um, have an implicit volatility because what's implied is there's a direct quantitative risk. And that quantitative risk means 
at the end of the day that it's not based on sort of paper. It's based on real intrinsic value. So if you're losing crypto, you're like losing real value. Just for instance, uh, the best you know, correlation to crypto or analogy would be commodities, you know, where you're investing in a real asset that has you know, real value and it has the opportunity to basically, if you invest, uh, you know, you could lose more than what you put in. But such is the nature of, of you know, commodities in these types of markets that have intrinsic value. So it is always going to imply, you know, that you should be cautious and that you should be mindful of such risk. But when you talk about, you know, the creation of wealth, easiest thing to prove in any situation is ownership. So as with commodities, even though you have a contract, you have the option or you have the obligation to transact on the value that that contract is based on. So let's just use uh, grains, for instance, or talk about corn. So let's say the 5,000 you know, bushels of corn goes down to one penny, right? So that means that 5,000 bushels of corn will cost you like, you know, virtually 500 bucks and you get a truckload of corn to your door. <laughs> but at least at the end of the day, you end up with something that you can use and consume. Whereas with stocks, you end up with just paper in your hands. So crypto is the same way. You, what you do have... you feel, okay, going forward, okay, we see regulatory bodies coming out with their, the Bank of England even tweeted out some, you know, cryptic message that they're bringing out cryptocurrency. We know we heard of the digital one. What do you feel about once they release these coins into the market? I mean, it's kind of, the whole point of cryptocurrencies was to get away from the monetary system. Now they're oh, yeah. infiltrating the, the system with their own coins. Do you feel that the it will have a big impact into, into the cryptocurrency sphere? Like it's not for the people. And that's the whole interest around cryptocurrency is like it's unregulated. Yeah, you know, it has well, a special appeal. The, well, the and, easy answer uh, is the market's going to decide. Right? And, and to add to that, do you know how much did a digital yuan is circulating or fiat yuan is circulating? I mean, I don't know the exact figures, I mean, but if you talk no. about dollars, yeah, it's trillions and trillions of dollars. Correct. And the same with the dollar. I'm not just trying to pick on a digital you want either. We're, we're already living in a digital digital system now. I mean, 90% of the dollars is digital, right? It's only 10% that's floating around around the world. Right? So, but there will uh, only be 21 million Bitcoin. And I know that's, it's shocking to hear in the environment that we we live in as far as the u.s printing five trillion dollars in the last you COVID, know covid relief <laughs> crazy yeah. i mean it, there, there's no way they can pay that money back and i don't think they ever will pay the money back or have they're not planning on paying the money back so you know, you've got these new modern theories, like the modern, modern monetary theory. Anyone will understand it. The way the system's designed is just perpetual debt. Um, so obviously Bitcoin, you know, as it's been capped at 21 million and probably 5 million, they say, is, is dead wallet. So you probably only have 16 million Bitcoins flowing around. And there's a deflationary uh, model, which uh, counter to the fiat currency. And I, I feel... If we want to talk about politics, so I feel like they're bringing out the system to kind of swap it out with the current system, and maybe there's a way that they can kind of, you know, get themselves out of this hole, and then how that affects the not only the cryptocurrency economy but the actual real economy. So that's something to look forward to, I guess. No, um, and, I, and I had an interesting conversation to add to that the other day, and uh, nobody talks about China banning Google. Nobody talks about China banning porn, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram. Actually, they created TikTok, and I don't, I, I can't speak firmly here because I'm not sure, but TikTok is for the West, not for China. Um, and with that said, them banning Bitcoin should, should speak volume to everybody in the world as to why, right? It's a yeah. decentralized economy that, again, it's the financial revolution that's taking place and they don't, 
what's China's biggest strength? They're a communist country and, and they are able to control their people and they want to obviously emphasize that however they can. And it's, it's come the time where they have. Why? Because the digital yuan is, is ready. And CBDCs, the central bank digital currencies that are coming, is not crypto. But I see a future where the media is portraying a digital dollar, a digital yuan, and so on, as if is. Because the market isn't as smart as we would hope yet. And it, it's just time. It's going to take time. You know, I mean, the Industrial Revolution took 50 plus years. Um, we could talk about the dot com era and in, in the Internet. Would you, still... would you classify cryptocurrencies as a revolution as compared to the uh, you know, Industrial Revolution? Do you, would you classify cryptocurrencies as that significant a technology in the world? that will revolutionize the world as, as much as the ones before? Absolutely. I mean, you mentioned already that everything's already digital, right? Uh, I, I know that whoever wants to withdraw all the dollars that in their accounts, wherever it may be, there will not be enough cash to satisfy that. And I could speak yes. the same for the rest of the world. And um, it's inevitable. So with time, People will get smarter, I hope. And it is a financial revolution that's taking place and we're right in the middle of it and we're still in the beginning. We're just scratching the surface. We're still at first inning. You know, we're gonna deal with government pushing it down and and FUD from China or from wherever it may come. Um, but at the same time, El Salvador just made it a legal tender. That's, that's a big deal. And not For just sure. El Salvador. You know, it, it's going to start following suit with a, with with a bunch of smaller countries that have been affected by inflationary problems, um, and it's it, and I'm not worried. I'm not worried about the government because I'm. I, I know that I believe in the people. It's funny to see that as soon as the El Salvador they, uh, you know, they said they'll they'll use Bitcoin as legal tender. Um, a report came out of, of IMF saying they will not help them with the uh, implementation. And, they were very anti the decision. They're scared. <laughs> the BIS is scared. The Bank of International Settlements are scared. This is just my opinion, but they're they're delaying as much time as they can and spreading as much fun as they can to recalibrate themselves because they didn't give the attention that it deserved at the time. They didn't think, you know, that not letting it get this strong. And and now where are we? You know, we have institutions investing we have more than institutions we have governments making it a legal tender this is the this is a topic that's gonna it takes time nothing happens overnight you know and i'm not worried about the people that want things to happen i mean obviously i would who wouldn't love who's already in the space for bitcoin to be at a million but it, <laughs> i'm a, i know it will be i know and it's just a matter of time and, and governments will be exposed and so will the BIS and so on. There's nothing that backs any dollar anymore. Sure. So, uh, yeah, we're definitely living through interesting times. We've seen uh, civil unrest due to uh, the COVID pandemic, and uh, we've seen price really during the COVID pandemic go up to 60,000, now gone down to, to you know 30 or 1,000. Where do you feel from a price perspective we are in Bitcoin? Do you think we're still looking for more volatility or do you feel like we, we've come out the the main rut and we, we should be on an upward trend going forward? Or for you as a miner, you're not so concerned? Um, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much where I stand. Um, I can't speak for the global market because we are talking a global market. Everybody is influenced by the media as much as I wish we weren't. There are still people that are pushing Dogecoin that don't know why <laughs> no, or, or whatever crypto it may be. And that's just a lack of understanding, a lack of due diligence, a lack of research and, and, and it will come. I know one thing for sure, there will only be 21 million Bitcoin. 
and or whether it's 16 because of the 5 million that's locked up and so on this is going to cause a change and do do your research do your do your due diligence you know people want to get rich quick and this isn't you know it doesn't exist no matter if the whoever it is that's advocating or pushing for whatever token that may exist it, it just shows a reflection of the market to answer your question as far as price it just shows a reflection of the market when there's a tweet that impacts the market and and that's just where we're at right now it's a different phase it's not like 2017 or 2018 going into 2018 this is a different it's a different market now sure more mature, more matured exactly it's gonna and and everybody's gonna i hope with this you know, going from all time high of 64 and change to 30, 35 currently, um, that's what people take from this. That's what I hope because it's, it's needed. The meme coins, they're, they're, they're destroying the, the cryptocurrency, the seriousness of it. I really don't like to see these new coins like the Shibu coin, they're getting billions of dollars of market cap. And you just you look at the, the technology, you look at anything about it, there's nothing, nothing there, right? And it's just, uh, it's just, it's given a bad name for the cryptocurrency because at the end of the day, they, they will lose their shirt. It takes away from the actual brilliance of, of coins such as Bitcoin and uh, new good technologies that like ADA for one is um, technology backing behind it is a serious coin. And I just feel these, these silly scam coins that are coming out, um, they really take away from from the actual cryptocurrency industry. So I, I hope it does mature in the sense that you know they get left behind. It's going to take a long time, and it, but it will happen. It will happen. And that's our role. That's our role. That's why we're doing this. Um, exactly what we're doing right now with and I look at coin coin analytics, coin analytics, CoinCast. You know, and that's that's what's needed more in the space. There's definitely a lack of education. That's, that's, that's apparent. I mean, I was having a laugh, uh, like I think last month I was looking at, you know, coin market cap and then going down through the coins. And there's coins at half a billion market cap. Click on the link for the website. It doesn't even show up. Like you're thinking, who's buying this stuff? They haven't even got a website explaining the coin. It's just insane, right? You've got some really, really crazy stuff that's out there. And uh, it no, just shows it's... what type of investors are out there, right? <laughs> And to go back to your, your question of regulation, I, I, I know people that have mortgaged their house and lost money in the stock market and it's regulated. It's not fair that crypto is getting that stigma of people losing money and so on. It's, that's a, listen, if I'm going to invest in anything and take my hard earned money and put it into invest into a company, um, equities commodities etc i'm going to do my due diligence behind it sure. and that doesn't happen anymore people just are blinded by nobody wants to listen out. <laughs> yeah you know and and that's that will come with time you know and i, and I do see a reality later five ten years from now that what's taking place right now as far as the you know meme coins and and i don't say meme stocks because that's a whole different animal which i actually respect because that's essentially the same of what we're trying to do here that's retail saying if, if big money can manipulate markets we can too now and i love that i really do the, the meme coins is we're going to be talking about remember that time back in 2021 when dogecoin that had no market cap da 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 da, da. <laughs> You know, like it, it's gonna be like that. There's it, no it, doubt. It, it reminds me of the dot com bubble, right? You know, exactly. you have a pizza shop saying, "Oh, pizza technology or something." You know, they're listing themselves <laughs> as a pizza shop, right? And exactly. they're getting crazy, crazy amount of shares sold. So it's, it's exactly the same. You know, this is just a phase of the of the industry as a whole. It'll mature people get smarter. You know, they'll be burned a few times, and they say, oh, "That's enough is enough," right? It's um, part of the growth. It's part of the yeah, growth, it's part of the process. And uh, I know everybody's not so patient nowadays. We're, we're very instantaneous and they'll learn. That's what I hope. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say regulation is inevitable, but it's just the way how people, 
the market dictates how cryptocurrency will be used. They can force it into like an underground uh, state. Do you think governments will go that far? It's interesting what's taking place right now when you ask that question. Because if you ask if you asked me that six months ago, it'd be much different than than my answer right now. But China has obviously forced the hand and really has banned, you know, crypto and, and mining in that sense. Um and you would think that it would have affected the price more and, and for what I can't speak for the rest of the week or for the next two months and so on. But what I can say is this, is that there's a transition of power taking place. It's the big migration from east to west. And I'm, I'm very excited for what's to come because the biggest thing that, you know, if the west is adopting it after China has been, how can I say, um, been from the beginning, the top money manufacturers in the world, the top five are in China. Have they been given a time period to seize operations or is it just instant now, right? from day one to close up now? Have they closed already or is it in progress? With China specifically, yep. I think you're, you're, you're mentioning them specifically, correct? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so the way the politics works in China is obviously it's not a democracy in the sense of where votes count and the way you climb up that ladder in, in, in politics in China is by listening to the leader. And that's what obviously we're seeing right now. That's why it happened so fast. So as far as the time frame, I mean, it's already taken place. Um, it's, it's happening. We've seen it on various occasions and and but wouldn't so that just push the mining activity off to somewhere like Singapore, who have a close relationship and close ties with China? They've got their offshore bank there. But Singapore doesn't have the amount of capacity to sustain the amount of hashing yeah. power that is dislocating, right? Okay. Nor does the world uh, right now. And, that, and that's what's great about what's taking place right now, because last year there was a point in time where there obviously currently still is a chip shortage. And the only machines you can get were pre-orders within eight months. If you were going to pay 3x on price of the machine on a spot value, they're doing the whole market a favor. And, and not the whole market, the, the network. Sure. Once the dust settles within two months from now, because at that point, we'll, we will really, we probably will see back 120, 140 hashes at that point. Because right now, since we were at like 160, I believe, and currently we're around 100, and that it, we're gonna be back online, um, and the world's gonna be there. And the West is so invested; their the institution, regulation, et cetera, is so it, it's too big to fail at this point. And it's in everybody's best interest to at least sustain where we're at. And it might eat my words. We might have another, a bigger dip, right? Yep. From where we are now. But I, I, I'm gonna stick to the having and, and so on and economics that I know, which is just supply and demand. And where, where I see where, where we're going is, is up in the next yeah. six Can you months. just explain for the viewers very basically the hash rate what it means for mining. I think what the viewers need to understand is that there was a point in time where China controlled them, was controlling the market in the, in the sense of producing the miners and so on. The, again, the biggest five manufacturers are in China and even the government was mining Bitcoin. And that's important to, to consider. And as far as the network itself, as far as the hashing and power of the whole network, it's uncorrelated with price because the complexity is going to adjust according to the demand, right? According to the amount of transactions taking place and so on. So we can easily be at a hundred exahashes and still be okay as far as accounting the amount of transactions that are taking place and, and so on. The complexity is going to adjust to that. Um, so it doesn't matter if we have 200 trillion terahashes per second or 100 billion, which is a enormous difference. 
because the complexity is going to adjust to it. It's a matter of the market wanting to be a part of it and just keep the network honest. Very, very insightful. Thank you very much. Can we ask you questions? You of wanna, course. What do you feel about some of the, you know, as far as regulation, at least? I came least. from economics. Since the beginning, I was on the view that it cannot work cryptocurrency in the sense that the government will never allow a decentralized monetary system like money money is everything for governments they will never allow a monetary system but what i failed to understand is that i i should have really i should have seen cryptocurrency as a trade i did meet the, the co-founder of ethereum we were sitting ha having a coffee running a hedge fund at the time right and it was like, oh why don't you put some money in cryptocurrency and it, in my mind it's like this is not going to work due to government secondly at the time you know institutions weren't looking at cryptocurrency it was very small boutique players that were looking at cryptocurrency i cannot uh, introduce this to my investor they'll think i'm hippie or something like that was that was the scene at the time however i failed to realize if i should have traded you know my personal wealth in cryptocurrency at the time i was always under the guise it cannot become something serious because the governments need to need to handle this but i'm impressed at how far cryptocurrency has come so my viewpoint has definitely changed in the sense that it, cryptocurrency in a sense will be a part of the economy going forward what i was interested in seeing china they talk to banks but it's just about the people how are they going to react to certain bans they can attack banks itself you know, people need to report their cryptocurrency holdings to governments due to tax so, so the, the risk is going to be much much higher and what that does to the price that's something we have to analyze going forward in terms of technology fantastic i love the idea of decentralization i think the whole world should be should be following that system even as a political system should be decentralized you know cities or, or areas you know, it's not it's not one rule fits all for every single government. We've seen in, in the European Union, that the way Greeks behave with money is completely different to the way Germans behave with money. But they're forcing this German law, so to speak, handling money for the economy on Greece. And that's why I believe the European Union as a whole is will fail as well, right? But there's certainly really, really positive things that are coming out of there. And a lot of big banks are now getting involved, which is really, really good to see. It's, it's good to see in the, in the sense that it will be allowed. With any maturing market, the government's always afraid of new systems. But as it matures, hopefully there'll be regulations set in place that allows it, doesn't hinder the progress it's making. I think that's great, man. I think we got a lot of good information tonight and uh, today. And uh, just to say it like this, I think the challenges to the overall Bitcoin, Ethereum, and everything else that sort of preceded anything that the government could conceive is really the strongest proof of concept. And now it's just really up for the market to decide what they want. If they want to continue to take what the government's been providing, or if they want to really participate in a fully decentralized marketplace where they have complete input and they have a, an ability to suggest and promote the value of what they they use and consume and, and transact. So this is a very, very simple discussion that we're having. And the great part about it is, is you know, we don't have to take a decision here because we're participating in our own ways, but the market itself is going to define the outcome. And, you know, we all have the opportunity to decide how we want to participate. To be honest, it's an amazing instrument to trade as just like from a trading perspective. It's, it's the volatility I love. You've got lots of options, different coins. It's, it's very, very exciting to trade. And no other sector in this world can compare, right? Like you, we were talking about if you're investing in gold and silver and holding it, you know, that's like a weekly return in, in, in cryptocurrencies. Right? It's really exciting. The community is great. And I really hope that it is allowed to to flourish the biggest challenge we're facing is just transparency right and um that's what we're facing here we'll find out soon enough if the market's smart enough to understand that they want transparency within the economics that are taking place every day